Good morning. We're testing something today. So when you come on, let me know if you hear this. We're testing something. I'm testing to see. When you come on, let me know if you hear this. I'm testing this microphone to see if it gives us better sound. So give me a something in the comments that tells me if you can hear this. Because I want to know if you can hear it through this microphone. Okay, tell me this. Do you does it feel like it has better sound? Does it feel like the sound is more clear? I'm so curious because I want to use some energized lives for some podcasts. So I need the sound to be better. Now here's the thing. Here's what I don't have. So it's very clear. Okay, good. Here's what I don't have. I don't have anything to hold it. So this is what we're going to try. I don't know if this will work. <laughs> okay. So what I've done is put it on the top of the, um, <laughs> Do you all, do you read the comments? Like sometimes, do you read the comments? Equifit Jess, are you reading the comments? Because there's a, I don't hear a difference and there's a hundred thousand times percent better. <laughs> Literally back to back comments. Okay. Makes me laugh. Makes me laugh. Okay. So I'm just putting it up there. I'm just, we're just going to play with it a little bit. Now I sound very far away. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. But when I'm here, it sounds much better. Yes. The thing is, I can't make my energize holding a tiny mic, right? I can't hold, I can't make it, um, holding a tiny mic. So, um, I don't know. So, okay. So we'll just unplug it for now. I mean, we're always testing, right? We're always testing. Okay. So now it's unplugged. What do you think? Yes, I think that's what the time, now it's unplugged, so now it's just me talking to my phone, as one does. I don't, it doesn't have a clip. It doesn't have a clip. Um, so, you know, that's the problem. Listen, I also have this one. This is one I was really excited about. Because this one does clip. And I actually got these because I thought, oh, if I was doing a podcast out and about, I could have these microphones. So I got these and they do clip, but I can't figure out how to um, connect them to my phone. <laughs> so what we'll do is I'm going to make my Energize first, okay? I'm going to make my Energize because, okay, y'all, I, I get it. I get it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make my Energize because I cannot hold the tiny mic and um, make my Energize at the same time. And uh, if I put it up here or I try to, you know, kind of rig it or something, it's probably going to fall and then that's going to be, so I'm going to make my energize and then maybe I'll plug the tiny mic back in while we're talking about some stuff because today, y'all, today on Energize Live, welcome to Energize Live, by the way. <laughs> also, listen, I had this great podcast interview with um, my friend Rob, Rob Starkman yesterday. You're going to love it. It comes out next week. And it was such a powerful reminder. And this is a powerful, this should be a very powerful reminder that we're all figuring stuff out. We are all figuring stuff out. I don't know if this tiny mic works and I don't know if it sounds better for you, right? That's why we figure it out together. So if you are hesitating on doing something, my, listen, also, I can't, I'm getting a haircut today. I can't even tell you how excited I am. Look at this one. What are you doing? Just lay down, just lay down. I can't even wait to get my hair cut today. A combination of a hurricane last week and my hairstylist getting sick last week to listen. So my point is we're all figuring stuff out. And I think it's really easy for people to see someone like you might even see me, which is interesting. You might even see me and go, oh my gosh, she's live on Instagram every day. She must have it all figured out. Clearly, I do not have it all figured out, okay? I cannot figure out how to get this Bluetooth situation that would clip connected to my... So we don't have it all figured out. We're all trying to figure it out. But I do think this tiny mic will give us better sound. I just have to hold it the whole time, which is really annoying. Okay, so we're going to make some Energize. And the reason why I'm exploring this tiny mic is because I want to use more Energize Lives for podcast episodes. Why? Because I am obsessed 
with our conversations that we have, with our back and forth that we have, much more so than me sitting in a room recording something by myself. I would much rather be having a conversation with you. It's why I love my subscriber community. It's why I love coming on here to Energize Live. It's why I love my coaching community. I wanna be having a conversation with other high vibe women. And sometimes I don't feel like that when I'm sitting upstairs recording a podcast just on my own. It feels a little isolated. And I thought, gosh, why can't we use some of these awesome conversations that we have on Energize Live for podcast episodes to actually reach more people and maybe even get more people into our Energize Live community. Well, to do that, my podcast people who help me edit and produce my podcast would really like me to have better sound. Because sometimes they're like, no, you cannot use that. <laughs> you cannot use that video that you made while walking outside. The sound's bad. I'm like, but it was really good. And they're like, no, 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 it's not. And no, you can't use it. So we do have to have good sound. That is very important. Very important. So hence the tiny mic. That's why we're going to just kind of explore that for when we kind of, once we get the Energized made and we're kind of chit-chatting. So while I'm making the Energized, let's talk about this first. Because we're going to go into a whole series and just a whole theme for the next six weeks of thriving during the holidays. That is our theme from now until end of year is thriving during the holiday season. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Before we do that, please tell me, did you get Taylor Swift tickets? Because <laughs> really that's the most important piece of the conversation, right? Did you get Taylor Swift tickets? And if so, what show are you going to? And, and if so, how long did you have to wait in the queue? Did you get Taylor Swift tickets? Where are you going? How long was your queue? Tell me if you did. Because I will tell you that we got Taylor Swift tickets. <laughs> and it was a whole, listen, if you don't, we had, it was like a little, literal battle plan. We were, we had um, all the places to have all the codes we had all the accounts set up. We did a FaceTime, uh, you know, when the codes went out and then we had to, then the codes went out and um, then it was Josie, Josie, who waited in line to get the Taylor Swift tickets. Now, a little context on our family is, and I should, I feel like I should bring up this, this picture every time Taylor Swift goes on tour is that years and years and years and years ago, years ago, we saw Taylor Swift before, we were really just on the cusp of, of her getting big. She was at, I can't make this up, she was at Country Thunder in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. We go to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin every summer. That's where my husband's family has homes. They were, there's this big country music festival called Country Thunder that happens every year. Taylor Swift, before she was like ginormous, she was big, but she wasn't ginormous, was there. And the girls were obsessed with her, of course. And this was curly hair, sequin dress, cowboy boot, Taylor Swift, okay? This is Tears on My Guitar, Taylor Swift. This is Tim McGraw, Taylor Swift. So she comes out, she does her show. In the entire time, you know, she's doing her show, the girls are like, yeah, we just really want to meet her. We just really want to meet her. We just really want to meet her. Me being the mom that I am, I'm like, how am I going to get my kids to meet Taylor Swift? And I was like on a mission. I, to this day, I can't tell you how I managed it. I cannot. But somehow, some way, I managed to get them backstage in this like meet and greet that I think was probably for the... Um, probably for the fan club, I don't really know, but we managed to get them for backstage, I managed to get them backstage for this meet and greet and we have a picture of Taylor Swift and my children and me, I don't know how many years ago, um, curly hair, sequin dress, Taylor Swift, and when I tell you that she was 
so nice. And her dad was there because he was, is, you know, still kind of part of her management team. And he was like moving chairs and helping. I had a conversation with her dad. The girls had a conversation with Taylor Swift and she was so kind. And I, I truly hope that that is who she still is today. But my children have been, my daughters have been Taylor Swift fans literally since the beginning of time. And they've seen every concert. So we had tickets to Loverfest that got canceled because of COVID. And so there was no way that they were not gonna somehow figure out how to get to this concert. And so we did. Josie spent a lot of time in that virtual queue yesterday, but we got five tickets for the August shows in Los Angeles. And that's what we wanted because Josie's in Los Angeles. So we're gonna do, and Jesse will be off the ship in May. So we were also looking, you know, our dates were a little bit limited because we want Jessie to go too. So she gets off the ship at the end of May. So it's the first weekend in August and we'll, we'll do a family trip out to Los Angeles and um, hang out with Josie and see the concert and do Disneyland and do all that stuff. Um, because, because of that, that, that was the one that we were hoping for. We were really, we were really wanting LA because we wanted to do a family trip out there. So that's my Taylor Swift story. I hope you got tickets if you're wanting tickets. Then I know other people said, well, we, I got this ticket and this ticket. Listen, I love that you got those other tickets to Pink and to Billy Joel and whatever. I love that you did. That is not the story of the day, okay? <laughs> the story of the day is Ticketmaster crashing because of Taylor Swift, all right? I, I, that's all I'm saying. It's not that Billy Joel isn't amazing or Pink isn't amazing or that those aren't valid. Those are amazing concerts. Those are amazing. But the story of the day is the Taylor Swift queue, okay? So we're just saying that's the story of the day. So we did get tickets, five, LA in August. Listen, it's not like we're on the floor or anything, but but we will be in the room will be in the room okay also um you may have seen this elton john is doing his farewell concert and he's coming to la he's finishing it in la it's also going to be broadcast on disney plus so if you are an elton john fan and you're like there's no way i'm going to get tickets to go see him or i'm not going to go out to la to see his last concert it's going to be broadcast on disney plus and you'll be able to see all of it and i'm sure they'll have added documentary and and footage and stuff like that so just a little tidbit for you if you weren't aware of that. This tastes exceptionally good today. If you are not drinking Energize, I don't even... What are you doing? Who are you? Beth, that's a really good question because um, we were in line. And then I say we, even though she was in line, we all know who's paying for the tickets. Okay? <laughs> so it, it, this is... This is very much a we situation. She may have been waiting in line, but we know who's paying for the tickets. She was in line and then Ticketmaster crashed. So we did get codes. We got the pre-sale codes. We actually got two of them and we got the pre-sale codes. She was in line and then Ticketmaster crashed and then she had to get back in line. It was a mess. But then today is the um, Capital One pre-sale and they both have both Jenna and Josie have Capital One credit cards. So they're going to try to get um, tickets that way as well to see if they can get better seats than the ones we got in LA or maybe just additional tickets. I don't know. Josie's also going with two of her girlfriends to Houston. So <laughs> it was just really the story of the day was Taylor Swift yesterday. And are we going to get these tickets? And um, Josie called me. She's like, oh my God. So then we had a family FaceTime and Anyway, I hope, I hope if you didn't get them, may the force be with you and you do get them. Okay, I'm going to plug this in. Let's see how we go. Oh, wow. There's a little pause there. Okay, tell me how, tell me what you hear and how you hear it. How's it sound? Do I have to hold it like this? <laughs> the tiny mic? <laughs> do you have to hold it like, like, like I'm a rock star, but it's like with a tiny mic, like, this how, how do we how do we like this sound i feel like the sound has to be clearer because i've eliminated the travel time from my voice to here so yeah it's much clearer isn't it okay so we are going to talk about for the next six weeks uh, we're going to talk about um, the idea of thriving through the holiday season and i know that we've touched on this before and the reason why we want to talk about it is because 
I spent a lot of years, more years than I care to talk about, more years than I care to mention. I spent a lot of years surviving. If if someone sends me tiny hands to hold, that is exactly what I need. It needs to be, I need a stand that comes up within little tiny hands that hold it so it sits here, right? That's what I need. It needs to be on a stand, but the stand has to be tiny hands right here. Okay, let's focus. <laughs> let's focus. So I, I spent a lot of years really just surviving during the holiday season. Honestly, the... Um, the the description that I use always is I was white knuckling my way from October to October 31st to December 31st. I was white knuckling my way through two months. I was just trying to survive. And I look back now and I really think, I think about why. And I think there are a lot of pieces in there. Um, one, society expectations of women all the time, but also during the holidays and taking that on, um, familial expectations of what the holidays should be. Um, I had a lot of baggage, a lot of generational baggage from my mom on what the holidays should be and her very loud (laughs) and certain opinions on how the holidays should be. And it's interesting growing up we had, you know, very traditional holidays. And even though I was much younger than my siblings and my siblings lived in the town where we lived, of course, because nobody left and they would come over and we had really traditional, like everyone was at our house on Thanksgiving. And my mom was such a martyr and she did all the cooking and all the things. And then, you know, complained about having to do all the things, but wouldn't let anyone help her and then had to set this really amazing dining room table and blah, blah. And then Christmas had very, you know, sort of strict, like, this is what we do. This is what we do. And so you grow up with not just society expectations of what you're supposed to do in the holidays as females, you probably grow up with generational baggage. So let me know if in the comments, if that resonates with any of you, did any, do any of you feel like you grew up with some sort of generational expectation baggage of how the holidays are supposed to be and how they're supposed to feel and what you're supposed to do and what's wrong and what's right. And if you do something different, how any and all of that, like I really felt that and have had to unpack a lot of that um, because then you know, when I got married and had children, you know, we, we certainly participated in some of that, you know, for, for far too long, which probably, um, really contributed to me white knuckling my way through the holidays. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, my mother-in-law had, uh, very firm expectations that we were going to be at their house on Christmas day for breakfast. And, um, my husband being the middle child and just sort of, you know, he doesn't like to rock the boat would never say no. And so I can't tell you how many years on Christmas day, our girls would get up because I was really firm about our children sleeping in their own beds on Christmas Eve, but they would get up in the morning and it would be like Santa and open presents and toys. And then get ready. We got to go. Cause we had to drop, cause we were the ones that had to drive to Chicago cause we had to be up there by 10 AM. I'm like, what, the f- what? So unpacking that and getting firm in, um, no, that's not happening. Um, I remember we got rid of, because it didn't work in our family, you know, because everyone's family is different and and you should evolve and grow and, and whatever. We got rid of our dining room table because we didn't need a dining room for how our family functioned. We didn't need a dining room. We needed that room to be like a study room, a reading room, a gathering room. And then eventually during the pandemic, I turned it into a second workout space, almost more of a yoga studio space. I put a TV in there and we had a second workout space because everyone was home. But we didn't need a dining room, right? I will never forget the first time my mom came over and the dining room was gone and there was no more dining room table. I can't make this up. She, she I mean, it's funny now because you're like, what? When she saw that there was no dining room table, 
there was a whole diatribe on how us not having a dining room table is contributing to guns in schools and the decline of the family. Let me just take a drink of Energize as you digest that. I said it. We didn't have a dining room table. That's why. People not having dining room tables, but us specifically, um, was contributing to guns in schools and the entire decline of family. I'm like, okay. So when I tell you I understand what it feels like to white knuckle your way through the holidays, when I tell you I understand how it feels to have generational baggage, to have expectations of family, and to do, and that I've navigated my way through it, I am telling you this from ex- so much experience. My mom would come and sit in this little, I had this stool that was my grandmother's, And then we sat it in the kitchen and it was just this old stool and I kept it always because it reminded me of my grandmother and my mom would come sit on that little stool with her little judginess. And I will tell you that she literally um, made me despise Thanksgiving because of all the, the pressure and the expectations and the comments and the stuff that was, she made me despise the Thanksgiving holiday. I hate Thanksgiving. Um, or at least I did till this year, um, when I can do whatever that freak I want. So this is why I'm so passionate about this topic is because I've lived it. It's this is why I want to talk about it on Energize Live, on my podcast, on my Daily Dose of Real Talk, on any place that I can um, talk about it because I've lived it, I've navigated it, and I really feel like I'm on the other side of it and I feel like I can maybe help you navigate this because you deserve to have an amazing holiday season however it looks and feels to you. And I also think there is a measure of grace that has to come in to this because traditions and family traditions are important. They are. They are sometimes the the glue that sort of binds the family together. So I think that holiday traditions and family traditions are really important when they start to take precedence over logistical situations such as living far away or when they start to take precedence over what works for the the family and the family schedule. Listen, I will tell you this too. This is how effed up my family can be. Okay. So, but you know what I told someone in my subscriber um, community, you know, she was sharing about how she has a family member who's just kind of whack job. I'm like, well, don't we all, I do too. But here's the thing. If you have a family member who's a whack job, Um, at least, you know, it's not you because every family member has one. So if you don't have one, it could be you. It's better to know that it's your sister or someone else. Because if you don't, if you can't find that person in your family, it could be you. So just saying it's better to have one than think that it could be you. I remember one year, this was the coolest. This was the coolest year. My husband's football team had one the conference and for the first time ever in the in the history of the football program at Butler University not only did we win the conference but we got to go to the playoffs not only did we get to go to the playoffs we got to host a playoff game it had never been done in the history of Butler football okay he won the conference he went to the playoffs he got they got to host a playoff game and that playoff game happened on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So we were deep into practice and deep into really like game week schedules, you know, before Thanksgiving and then during Thanksgiving week. It wasn't like a holiday week for us. My husband wasn't on holiday. It We were in game week, right? And the, the kids, the players could not go home for Thanksgiving. And so for Thanksgiving, we had it catered in to the gym at the school and my husband, my daughters and I served our players Thanksgiving dinner, 
right? I mean, the, the school catered it in because the kids were playing in a conference game or in the playoff game on Saturday. But my husband and my daughters and I w- served them. We set it out. We served them. We cleaned it up. That was what we did for our Thanksgiving because we had a playoff game on Saturday. You would have, you, to tell you that the families did not understand is an understatement. I mean, I, can you, can you even comprehend that the, 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 the grief that I got from my mom, because we were, this is what we were doing for Thanksgiving and we weren't going to her or we weren't having a Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, because we were serving our players who were playing in a game on Saturday. And I'm like, what, what is actually, so I'm sharing all this with you because I I want you to know that as we go into this series and as we talk about thriving through the holidays, I want you to understand how deeply I understand it. And I also want you to understand and start to separate and unpack how much stuff is baggage that you are choosing to carry that does not belong to you. Okay, take that in and process that for a moment. I want you to understand how very deeply I feel this, how how very passionate I am about these two months and helping you thrive during the holiday season because I spent a lot of years not, because I've navigated a lot, I've done a lot of mindset work, I've done a lot of personal growth, I've learned how to set boundaries. Um, Also, and I'm just going to tell you this straight up, um, I make more money now. And when women make more money, a lot changes psychologically, mentally, it just does. So if you want to get bolder in your boundaries, make more money. I said what I said. I'm just telling you, it, it changes. It changes you. So because you understand, you understand your power and your strength, make more money. Um, so as we go into this and we talk more about this, I know one of the topics that, that my subscriber community wants to talk about are boundaries. Um, I have been through disordered eating. I have navigated disordered eating. That's not something that ever goes away. It's absolutely something that we manage. Um, my daughters, you know, have all walked that path to a degree. Uh, I've walked a path with really challenging parents, mothers and challenging. You're right, Beth. Yes, I can. Um, with challenging mother-in-laws, um, I've walked the path of being not close to your family as far as, you know, geographically, uh, like I've, I've really walked a lot of different paths and I think that's why I'm so passionate about it because I'm, I really feel like I'm on the other side of it and I want to help you get there too. And at the same time that helping you get there, part of that has to be owning that you're responsible for you getting there. I cannot say that loudly and boldly enough. You have to take responsibility for navigating this season in a way that feels good and right to you and not blame other people. That is, that's their baggage and that's their stuff. And you have to, have to take ownership on navigating these next few weeks with habits and practices and mindsets that help you love this season. You have to take ownership of that. You cannot spend the next, like, you know, for a long time, like I did the next two months being mad or frustrated or anxious or any of that and blame it on someone else and blame it on someone else because that's their baggage to carry. And if you take that on, you've chosen that and you've made it your baggage to carry. So step one in navigating the holidays is this, they're your holidays too. And the triggers are your responsibility. They are your, they're not anybody else's responsibility. Sorry, if you have triggers around food, eating, disordered eating, overeating, all of that, it's not anybody else's responsibility to not put dessert out at the holidays. Sorry, it's not. You are in charge of your triggers. You are in charge of your baggage. You are in charge of your mindset. You are in charge of your boundaries. So this is, this is the mindset that we have to get into. So then as we move forward and we're having conversations about that, the comments are not filled with, but my mother-in-law, but my sister, but my, no, no, my sister's a whack job too. Okay. My mom's very challenging. 
I have strong boundaries around my mom. I have really strong boundaries around my sister. I have strong boundaries around my mother-in-law. That's, I have to be in charge of that. I have to be in charge of that. I have to be in charge of my triggers. They're not in charge of my triggers. I'm in charge of my triggers. You're in charge of your triggers. You're in charge of your baggage. You're in charge of that stuff that you carry. They're in charge of theirs and they're going to try to give it to you. <laughs> they're going to try to hand it to you and put it on you. And you're in charge of saying, no, thank you. I have my own to carry <laughs> that I'm trying to work through. So that is really step one coming into these holiday seasons that, that you have to own all of that stuff. And you are in charge of owning all of that stuff. You are in charge of doing, doing the work around all that stuff. And I promise when you are and when you do, your holiday seasons will change. They will change. And you will no longer feel like you are white knuckling or surviving that you're thriving. I promise you. And I can tell you that because just because of the few stories that I've shared with you here, I think you can see that um, it's... We've navigated a lot. We have navigated a lot. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, my husband and I have very untraditional um, jobs. And our girls did very untraditional things and very untraditional activities. And so as such, we got a lot of flack from the family. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your holidays. At the end of the day, it's your holiday season. And it, they're your memories. And it's your joy that you're protecting. I know that. So... Okay, we're going to go because the very first tip, aside from owning all the, the things that you've got to own is, and we'll talk about this on the next Energize Live, but the, the biggest tip that I will always have is that you have to move your body. So I'm going to go do, move, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to move your body. Hi, Maria Ponte. How are you? Good to see you this morning. It's good to see you this morning. And I need you to write down this everyone write down this friday morning so this friday two days from now friday morning 7 30 a.m eastern standard time you need to be on energized life okay friday morning 7 30 a.m eastern standard time you need to be on energized life that's all i'm saying but remember for the next six weeks we are talking about this thriving through the holiday season i am here to help you do that i'm going to tell you number one you better go move your body go own own your mm, and you got to move your body. I'm going to go move my body right now. And you need to be on Energize Live Friday morning, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tell your friends. Tell your people. Spread the word. You're going to want to be on then. Cool? Okay. So I will see you then because tomorrow I'm with my team for Energize Live. So I will see you then. And we'll have great conversation. We will continue this conversation and we'll continue to talk about thriving during the holidays. If you have um, topics that you want to, to talk about, again, my subscriber community suggested we talk about boundaries. And I've got some other, I want to talk about movement. I want to talk about nutrition. I want to talk about affirmations and intentionality. And if you've got other topics that you want to talk about, DM me, send them my way, and um, we'll, we'll get to them all over the next few weeks. And we'll do it through the probably through the podcast as well and on DDRT and all the things. And um, we're going to make a very magical holiday season together. Okay. Now I'm going to drop the mic just because I can. Tell me what it sounds like. I did it. I dropped the mic. <laughs> okay. Go have an awesome Wednesday.